What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Stamina Warden. Uh, so, Stamina Warden is, um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the worst Stamina DPS, I've seen some pretty good Stamina Wardens horses out there, um, but it's definitely one that is uh, a little more tricky in order to, to master. It definitely doesn't have quite the same amount of chops as uh, the Stamina Nightblade, um, but when played correctly and in the right hands, it's able to parse evenly with other uh, classes. Um, the d big downside of uh, getting to that level, though, is you do need to use the bear. So much like the Magical Warden, your best DPS does come from using the bear. And if you have to drop the bear for any um, any fights where you can't use a pet, um, then your DPS does end up going down by a noticeable margin um, to the point where you do actually do end up um, performing the worst out of all the five different classes in the game right now. Um, however, that being said, uh, Stamina Wardens are still very strong. They're still um, very good and able to clear all the vet content in the game they still parse higher than their magic counterparts um they just won't if you're looking for stamina light blade levels of dps you're gonna have to play a stamina light blade unfortunately um stamina wardens are still fairly uh fun and the rotation is fairly static as well um but again if you are unable to use that bear uh then it, your DPS drops by a considerable margin, anywhere from between 2k to 3k DPS. So uh, being able to run the bear is critical to a Warden DPS's success, whether that's Stamina or Magicka. So uh, just like our other build videos, we'll be going over our gear, our skills, our uh, attributes, CPs, everything you need to know in order to kind of make this build yourself. Um, I will be kind of pointing out where substitutions can be made. Uh, depending on the fight. I'll also talk about which skills you can use, uh, depending you know, on your, your group level, and on the fight, and things like that. Uh, so I will take a little bit of time to want to talk over our gear and skills to kind of explain uh, why I'm using certain sets and what sets you can use to kind of replace uh, those sets if you don't have them, or uh, the fight means that it, they're not as good. So starting off first here with uh, gear. So for Monster Helm sets, we're sticking with uh, Selene's. Uh, with the changes to light attack damage, as well as Reliquin being considered a uh, direct melee damage, uh, Selene's has become very, very powerful. It's actually out parses Veladrets uh, if you're able to use Reliquin. Uh, now, the reason for that is because Reliquin can proc Selene's while it's on the back bar, which means you get more procs out of Selene's as you used to uh, before Reliquin was introduced. Um, that being said, though, Selene's does have a small weakness in that you basically uh, need to be within melee range in order for the proc itself to hit. Um, if the boss is moving around, like if it moves out of the way of your proc, um, then in that case, uh, Selene's does lose out on some damage um, just because it's not able to hit it every uh, every time it procs. Belladress, on the other hand, which is the other monster helm set that I would recommend running, that one... Um, has a little bit of leeway in that the proc itself shoots out three spores. Um, so you can, if you know the fight, if you know where the boss is going, things like that, uh, you might be able to aim the spore. Uh, so that way, when the spore travels out, it actually hits the boss, so you're not giving up on damage that way. Veldrex also has the advantage of uh, two spores being able to hit the same boss uh, more than once um, if the boss is a large enough hitbox. I've been, I have seen two hit uh, a box. Uh, a boss at once. I have not yet seen three, but I've heard that it is possible to do. Uh, so if you're able to do that with Veladress, then Veladress will pull ahead, but otherwise Selene is going to win out. Selene is generally going to be more consistent than Veladress is. Uh, Alright, for our 5B set, it's none other than Reliquin. That has not changed from Somerset uh, to Wolf Hunter. Reliquin is still the strongest stamina set uh, in the game right now. Uh, combined with Minor Slayer and the five-piece proc damage, um, it is by and far the strongest set that you can use. Um, that being said, though, uh, it is not perfect for every fight. Um, so before we go into that, the Reliquins, uh, I have the perfect version here, but you can use the imperfect version if you can't clear uh, Cloud Rest plus one and up. Um, the difference is that five-piece uh, bonus of the max stamina. Uh, the imperfect version doesn't have that. 
So it's a little bit less DPS, but the five piece proc damage is still exactly the same between the perfect and imperfect versions. Uh, so that's kind of the most important thing with Reliquence. Uh, now, like I said earlier, Reliquence is not the best set for every single fight in the game. Um, because if there are fights where you have to swap targets very often, uh, so good examples of these would be the twins in Vima uh, or the triplets in Huff, uh, where you're swapping targets very often, uh, then Reliquence loses a lot of power because you don't have enough time to necessarily stack um, all the procs onto a single target that way. Uh, so in those instances, you're going to want to swap Reliquent out uh, for a different set. Uh, the set that I would mostly recommend, uh, highly recommend, is going to be, uh, if you're using a bear ultimate, it's going to be a war machine. Uh, but if you're not using the bear ultimate because it's a fight you can't use pets on, then I would go with VO instead, which is a figure. Uh, war machine, again, is only with the bear because the bear costs 75 ultimate, which is very cheap, so you're able to do it pretty much every other time you're on your front bar rotation. Um, so you're able to get anywhere between, I think, 40 to almost 50% main Major Slayer uptime by yourself if you have a uh, War Machine on your body. Um, you don't have to necessarily use War Machine on your body, and I'll talk about that when we go over front bar sets, um, but if you're not able to use Reliquid on body, then I would just stick with a War Machine on the body instead. Uh, but again, that's kind of up to you. You can use War Machine on the, on the front bar if you'd like. VO is the other option if you do want to maintain that Minor Slayer, uh, plus it just helps out your sustain. Uh, Stamina Wardens uh, don't have quite the same level of sustain as um, as Nightblades do. They're not as bad as Templars, uh, and but they don't match uh, Sorks or Nightblades when it comes to sustain. Um, and obviously they don't come close to touching Stam Decays, because Stam Decays do heavy attack rotations. Um, so you do, uh, having that VO bonus there, the additional 8% reduction in Stamina abilities is really nice to help out your sustain a little bit. Now, if you don't have either of those two sets, you can go with any of the standard uh, stamina sets. So things like Hunting's Rage is a good option if you have that available to you. Um, uh, so that, that's another option there. Uh, Leviathan's not a bad set if you can put it on your body. Uh, so only on the body pieces. You don't necessarily want it on the front bar set because you do lose the uh, five-piece huge crit bonus on the back bar, which is a noticeable loss in DPS. Um, so that, that is one option there. Um, and if you do have Twice Fang Snake, you can go with Twice Fang Snake too. Um, the danger with Twice Fang Snake is that if you are running the lover because you're running Reliquent, uh, then you will end up over-penetrating if you're running the lover. So Twice Fang Snake is one of those sets where if you are going to use it, you're going to be using it for the entire trial. Uh, so... Uh, so that way you're not over penetrating when you swap back to Reliquent. So that's kind of the only downside of having to run Twice Fang Snake. It's pretty much it's Twice Fang Snake and the Warrior or nothing, uh, or the Reliquent and the Lover. Otherwise, uh, pairing Twice Fang Snake with the Lover always ends up with over penetration. Now for our front bar sets, uh, again, you have several options here. I have Advancing Yokeda here. Uh, Advancing Yokeda, uh, I found to be the strongest set for stamina wards, at least for this particular build that I have here, um, just because uh, you don't, we're not really doing that much direct melee damage outside of Reliquin and our light attacks. Um, so a set like Ravager, while well, you could still use it, it's not going to have the same amount of uptime as Sort, or the Spamble uh, is a direct damage uh, and can proc, um, can proc Ravager. Uh, so Advanced Yokeda, uh, despite the fact that Warders do not have 10% additional crit damage like Templars or Nightblades, Advanced Yokeda is still among the strongest sets uh, that you can use here. Now, another sets, other sets that you can use for your front bar set. So this is, again, only active on your front bar here, because we have the Malfour Ball on our back bar. Um, War Machine, I mentioned this earlier, can be a front bar set. Uh, you just have to remember when you are running War Machine as a front bar set to use the bear ultimate on your front bar. Don't use it on your back bar because obviously, use it on your back bar, you won't get that major, you know, won't get that major slayer. Um, you can actually run War Machine um, as your front bar set with Reliquid. Yes, you do end up doubling up on minor slayer, so you do lose one set bonus. Um, but major slayer boost uh, makes uh, kind of makes up for that a little bit. Um, so between the Matthew Kane and War Machine, those are the two sets that I would go for first when it comes to front bar sets on a, on a stamina warden, if you're using the bear. If you're not using the bear, then Advanced Okada would definitely be my first choice. Um, I did mention the Ravager earlier. The Ravager is not necessarily a bad set to run with the stamina warden. It's just um, I was pulling lower numbers with Ravager compared to Advanced Okada instead. Um, so those are kind of the main sets that I would look for run on a stamina warden. Other options do include things like um, Veiled Heritance and uh, Briarheart. Uh, Briarheart over Veiled Heritance, of course. 
uh, just because Breitheart is a medium armor, armor set. And of course, you can always stick to the tried and true Hunting's Rage, which is probably going to be the lowest DPS out of all the ones that I mentioned earlier. Uh, now, a couple of things that you are going to want to keep in mind here is that Advancing Arcata, Ravager, and if you decide to, to run Failed Heritage for whatever reason, those are all heavy armor sets. Uh, so you will not be able to necessarily run uh, run them on your armor piece. You might be able to run one piece if you're going with six medium, one heavy, like I am here. Um, but otherwise, you're going to need to run the jewelry pieces. And because they're heavy sets, you will need to transmute your jewelry pieces. So you can see here that all three of my jewelry pieces are transmuted uh, because Advanced Yokeda is a heavy armor set. So you will need two weapons, and then usually you'll run three jewelry pieces uh, if you're running Advanced Yokeda, Ravager, or Veiled Heritage. And now speaking of set pieces, uh, so I am doing... Um, Six medium, one heavy. And this is because we are using Dubious Command Throne for the additional sustain. Uh, stamina Warden sustain is kind, like I said, not as good as Sork and uh, Nightblades. Better than Templars, uh, uh, worse than Stab Decays. So um, they kind of fall uh, second to last when it comes to sustain. Uh, so we will need to use Dubious Command Throne to help us sustain. Uh, we are doing at least one heavy attack per front bar rotation, but we still want to have. Um, Dubious Command Throne for that additional regen, and you'll see when we do the six million dummy parts what I mean um, when I say we still want that additional regen. We do have one heavy piece in order to make up for the health, and we do have a health enchant on our show on a small piece here, again, to make up for that health. Uh, all of, everything else is going to be stam, max stam enchants, and then all of our armor pieces are going to be divines. Infused is not as strong on stamina as it is on uh, magic up, so we do want all the divines uh, here. Now, for our uh, jewelry traits, uh, for enchants, we want three weapon damage jewelry. Our sustain is not that bad that we need to replace one of these weapon damage enchants with a uh, regen glyph. Uh, no stamina DPS, as far as I know, if you do the rotation properly, uh, needs any additional regen glyphs. So you can go with three weapon damage enchants. Now, I have one bloodthirsty and two infused here. Um, so infused is stronger than robust on stamina DPS just because stamina DPS have... Uh, higher weapon damage modifiers compared to max stam modifiers, so infused that we're pointing out. Uh, now, one thing I do want to note with Bloodthirsty, so I have heard that the Bear Ultimate does not scale off of Bloodthirsty, uh, so Bloodthirsty is not quite as strong on a Warden as it is on other classes, just for that reason there. Um, so we're not necessarily going to be running three Bloodthirsty. You can if you would like to. Um, if you're not running the Bear consistently, like if you are running the Bear for maybe two fights and then the rest of the fights you're running... Um, uh, non-bear builds, uh, then yes, you can go with three bloodthirsty, but if you're sticking with bear the whole time, it might be better off running three infused instead, or one bloodthirsty, two infused, like I have here. Uh, but if you're not running the bear, then you can go with any combination uh, between uh, three bloodthirsty, three infused, or anything in between there. For our weapons, our front bar is Nernhone with a disease damage enchant. Uh, our offhand is going to be precise with a weapon damage enchant. And they're both daggers. You can go with dagger axe if you would like. Uh, but I found double daggers to be the best option here for the highest DPS. And then for our back bar, we have the Maelstrom Bow infused with a poison damage enchant. So it did change how uh, back bar enchants work in Wolf Hunter so that um, Endless Hail, when we use it on our back bar and swap for our front bar, will continue to prop our back bar enchant. Uh, so we'll continue to proc that poison damage enchant, and it will remember that it is infused, so we are sticking with infused for the additional enchant damage there. So the enchant cooldown. Uh, so that is it for kind of gear and kind of substitutions there. Going over a character sheet now. This is kind of just more generic information. For race, we are Red Guards. Red Guards are uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest race uh, for stamina DPS across almost all the different classes, the only exception would probably be Night Blades, where Khajiits can sometimes pull ahead. Uh, so Red Guards, uh, the reason why they're so strong is because of their Adrenaline Rush passive, which restores uh, about 750 stamina every 5 seconds whenever you deal direct melee damage. Uh, so that works out, if you do the math, to be about 140-150 additional stamina regen per second. Um, so that's pretty strong for sustain, especially with everybody moving towards... Uh, of course, light attack builds because of the changes to how light attacks and heavy attacks scale and, and damage that way. Um, you will the, the, the additional regen you get from Red Guard is really, really important. Now, there are some other race choices. I did mention Gajits earlier. Uh, they don't get any sort of max stamina uh, boost, uh, so Red Guards do get 10% max stamina. Uh, they do have 10% stamina regen, uh, uh, but they don't have any sort of additional max stamina, so you will have lower, a lower resource pool as a Gajit. Uh, but instead of max stamina, you gain 8% additional crit damage, uh, or not crit damage, weapon crit. 
so they kind of trade off max resources for additional crit. Um, so it's a little bit harder to sustain on a Khajiit versus a Red Guard, um, but the crit sort of makes up for that uh, in some instances. Other race options include the Bajmer, which are the Wood Elves. Uh, they get 60% max stam, 21% stamina regen, so uh, they get a little bit of resources and a little bit of regen, but um, the extra regen you get compared to the Red Guard uh, doesn't quite make up for that uh, adrenaline rush passive. And then Imperials, you have access to the Imperial Edition. Imperials get 10% max stam and 12% max health, which means you won't need to put any points into health like I have here uh, if you're running Advancing Data. Uh, so that is one option there. You do need to have the Imperial Edition, uh, but you also lose out on the Red Guard uh, Sustain bonus. Uh, so that's kind of a trade off that you make there. Uh, you get the additional health, uh, but you do lose the stamina uh, sustain. And that being said, if you're able to sustain it, uh, Imperials are not a bad choice at all. Now for attributes, I have 10 points into health, 54 into stamina here. Again, this is because we are using Dubious Command Throne, so we will need to put some more points into health in order to make up that loss of health there. Uh, so we have 10 points health, 54 stamina. Now I do want to point out here that some of the sets that I mentioned earlier, uh, specifically Ravager I know has it, I think Veiled Heritance might have it as well, they have a max health set bonus. So if you're using the Ravager, you can actually uh, remove all the points from health and put them all into stamina because of that one uh, health bonus on the set piece there. Uh, but that's only for very specific sets, so I know the Ravager has it. I'm not 100% sure if Veiled Heritance have it, has it, though. Um, so that's there. So you can see here our health sitting at 16.8, uh, just shy of 16.9k, uh, which is pretty comfortable uh, for, for vet trials. Now for our Mundus stun, we're going with the Lover, uh, with the loss of Night Mother's Gaze and Sunder Flame as unique debuffs, we will need to make up that penetration, so we are running the Lover instead. I did mention earlier that if you are running Twice Fang Snake, then you should not be running the Lover, because you will end up over-penetrating, um, the exception being if you don't have Alkosh. Uh, if you're not running Alkosh at all, then stick with the Lover. Uh, but if you're running Twice Fang Snake, um, then you will be running the Warrior instead, instead of the Lover, uh, just because if you combine the Lover and Twice Fang Snake, you will almost certainly end up over-penetrating. Those two um, debuffs combined uh, make up about close to half of the uh, total penetration value, uh, penetration cap. So just keep that in mind uh, if you decide are running twice fake snake at all. And I mentioned this plenty of times, but we are using Dubious Kamar and Throne. So you can go with Artaeum, take away Broth if you'd like. That's the gold version of Dubious Kamar and Throne. Uh, the downside is, of using Artaeum, take away Broth is that it is very expensive right now because it uses a alchemical ingredient from Somerset, which is still uncommon to find. Uh, so don't feel like you have to use the gold food. Dubious Kamar and Throne is perfectly fine. Now for our skills, we'll start off with our front bar here. We have Rending Slashes, Cutting Dive, Ball Match, Subterranean Assaults, Rearming Trap, and we have Wild's Guardian, which is our bear. If we aren't using the bear, then we will be using uh, Flawless Stonebreaker instead. For our back bar, there's a Caltrops, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Silver Leash. Uh, we're not obviously using this for DPS. We're mainly using this uh, for the 3% additional weapon damage uh, from the Fighter's Guild line. Uh, rearming Trap again, uh, so this is again not for the, we're not actually going to use it on a back bar, we're just using, having this here for the additional weapon damage boost. And then Wild Guardian again, uh, if you're not using Wild Guardian, then you'll be using the Bow Ultimate Ballista instead. Now, I do want to mention here that uh, there, I'm not running uh, Deadly Cloak at all, but you can run Deadly Cloak if you'd like for additional damage mitigation. So if you do decide to run Deadly Cloak, what I would recommend doing, is um, basically putting bull match on the back bar here so that way you're able to maintain that uh, additional weapon damage then you can take away silver leash and put bull match on the back bar here so if you do want to run deadly cloak this is what i would recommend doing uh instead basically take bull match move it to the back bar and then uh, get rid of silver leash here uh, but that's if you want to run deadly cloak for the additional damage mitigation you don't have to do that if you don't want to so let me just put these skills back um, you don't have to run Silver Leash either. You can run Circle of Protection or Expert Hunter. Um, the idea is you just want that, um, you do want that Fighter Skills ability, so you have that 3% additional weapon damage there. Uh, so that's it. You can also replace Cutting Dive with um, Shrouded Daggers if you'd like. It doesn't have it unlocked. Let me unlock it real quick. 
So if you run Shrouded Daggers, you'll have a better chance of running Rav uh, of proccing Ravager, so you'll have increased Ravager uptime. Um, it is also better cleave because it does bounce off of, uh, it can't hit up to two enemies, um, but it is uh, a little bit weaker uh, and it costs more stamina. Um, so that's kind of the downside of running Shrouded Dagger there. You can see here the difference uh, in the tooltip value. It's about 2k more Cutting Dive, and it's also about uh, 300 stamina cheaper. Uh, cutting Dive uh, is not really going to be our Spamble. Uh, we don't really have what I would call a Spamble, and that like we're not going to use it continuously. Um, so uh, that you could run Shrouded Daggers if you do want that additional cleave damage, or if you want an extra chance at uh, propping Ravager if you are using Ravager. Uh, so that is one option instead of cutting dive there. Now for our champion points, the CP cap is 780, which gives us 260 points to put across each of the three different constellation types. Starting off with our green CPs, nothing has changed here. It's still 75 moon cap, 75 tenacity. Put the remaining 110 wherever you'd like. Um, so uh, now that the CP cap has slowly been increasing, uh, you might even want to consider putting 100 moon cap, 100 tenacity, just get that last 1% there, and then put the remaining 60 wherever you'd like. Uh, but me, I still like to have some additional, um, some additional like break free reduction, things like that. So I have 40 Shadow Ward, 40 Tumbling, and 30 Warlord. But again, place them wherever you'd like. Now for our blue CPs, I do want to kind of mentioned here that this is optimized around having an organized raid group so we have good alkosh uptime and we have good infused crusher uptime uh, if you do not have either of those for example if you're missing alkosh or your alkosh uptime are not going to be quite as high uh, then you might need to shift a couple of points around in order to make up for that loss of penetration uh, so we can see here i have 23 points in the piercing uh, but you can drop uh, precise strikes down to 56 if you'd like so that will give you 10 more points you drop mastered arms down to 44 which give you which will give you another seven points so that'll give you an additional um, 17 points which you can push a piercing up to 40. Um, the, that the, the danger with stamina dps is that with the loss of night mother's gaze and thunder flame it's kind of hard to get up penetration cap without putting points for the piercing anymore um because uh, or running uh, twice effect snake and a lover uh so it, 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 you will need to definitely try to find a way to get it up to the penetration cap. So even if you have to run a sharpened offhand instead of a precise offhand, go ahead and do that instead. Um, in fact, if you don't have a, a minor breach, or not minor breach, minor fracture in group, like if you're not running a, stamp, if you're not running a stampler or anything, uh, sharpened on the offhand actually is preferred over precise because that will basically get you up to the penetration cap a little bit easier. Uh, but for an organized raid group, we have 64 Mighty, 23 Piercing, 66 Precise Strikes, 56 Thaumaturge. Uh, you can kind of swap these so you can take 5 out of Precise Strikes, put in Thaumaturge of 61, 61 if you'd like. Uh, the DPS difference is pretty much negligible. Um, and 51 into Master of Arms. And here are Red CPs. Uh, so this is kind of a more balanced approach. So we have good mitigation across all the different trials in the game, but we won't have the best mitigation for any single piece of content. Uh, so in those instances, for example, if you know you're going to be running VMAW, you might want to shift points around so you are have the best level of mitigation for VMAW. 66 in the Ironclad, 56 in the Thick Skin, 64 in Hardy and Elemental Defender. It leaves us 10 points, which we will put into Quick Recovery. Uh, we're just doing this for the Field Physician Passive. Uh, so obviously, if you're in a... Uh, Raid group that you know goes for speed, goes for leaderboard runs, uh, resets if somebody dies. Obviously, you're not going to need this passive. Um, but if you're in a progression style guild, if you're a more casual raid guild, you might want to pick this up uh, just because uh, it'll reduce the damage you take while you're resurrecting somebody. Um, that damage reduction is really nice to have. Uh, it'll basically give you a little bit more breathing space when it comes to resurrecting people, which is always nice to have. All right, so with all that said and done, let's go ahead and talk about our rotation. Our rotation is going to be static, and it's going to be coming in two phases. So it's very similar to uh, a, a, a stamp claw rotation in that uh, we will try to have a heavy attack in our rotation uh, as much as we can, uh, but I do have it set to two phases if we're using the bear. If you're not using the bear, if you're using the ballista instead, uh, then you'll this, this rotation will not change at all, and I'll kind of show you uh, both of them. Starting off with the bear first, though. Uh, the reason why the rotation comes in two stages is because the bear ultimate comes up every other time we're on our front bar. Um, so basically what that means is, um, let me just get the bear ultimate up so we can pretend like, um, yeah, I can actually just summon the bear right now, actually. Uh, so what I mean is uh, you use your bear ultimate, you run through your front bar rotation, you go to your back bar, you run front bar rotation again, 
go to your back bar. And then when you go back to your, your front bar rotation again, your barrel ultimate is up. Uh, and the barrel ultimate does use a global cooldown. Uh, so that basically leaves you with one less ability to use on the front bar. That's why I say we have two phases, so to speak, of our rotation. So I'll show you the, uh, the the bear rotation first, then I'll show you the non-bear rotation if you're not going to be using the bear. Before you start, always try to make sure you have the net jump, and then I like to open up with a uh, rearming trap. Do a heavy attack after the first uh, subterranean assault. Alright, and now we don't have to get our ultimate up, right? So we gain our additional cooldown here. So now the barrel ultimate is back up. So that's basically the, uh, the two different types of rotation. So the first rotation is going to be... So both rotations start off exactly the same. Uh, so if you have the barrel ultimate up, you'll use your barrel ultimate. Then you will do subterranean assault, heavy attack into uh, running slashes, light attack into cutting dive. At that point, you can do subterranean assault again. And if you use your barrel ultimate, then you do heavy attack, rearming trap, and then you go right into your back bar rotation. If you didn't use the barrel, uh, if you didn't use, hold on. If you didn't use the bear ultimate, um, then it's basically going to be start off the exact same. So, so train assault, heavy attack, light weave, heavy attack, or so train assault. The difference, uh, if you're not using the bear ultimate, is that you will be replacing the bear ultimate with the bull match refresh instead. Uh, so. Instead of uh, doing ultimate first, you would do something like, uh, again, subterranean assault, heavy attack, running slashes, light weave, cutting dive, subterranean assault, light weave, light weave, and there you go. So when you are activating the bear, you basically have two heavy attacks. If you're not activating the bear, then you have one heavy attack. Uh, let's, let's kill the dummy here so I can show you the... Uh, non-bear rotation. Non-bear rotation is, again, static, um, because you don't have to deal with the bear as often. Uh, plus, our ultimate is being used on the back bar instead, so we're just able to just reuse the back bar instead of our rotation. So, back bar, if you are running uh, no bear, you have Flawless Unbreaker on the front bar, Bliss on the back bar, Bliss is going to be your main ultimate. Use Ballista before Poison Injection. Heavy Light. Sub Salt. Heavy. Sub Assault Heavy into Rending. Light into Cutting. Light Sub Assault. And then Heavy again. Again, it's heavy. Now you will still need to uh, re-up Bullnetch. So when you have to re-up Bullnetch, you basically just do Bullnetch, drop a trap, and then go back to your front bar, back bar rotation. Uh, so we will, that's kind of the differences there. Uh, it really just boils down to how many times are you how many global cooldowns do you have on your front bar and how do you manage it? Uh, so even with a non bear, uh, bear rotation you saw, we still had to kind of play around a little bit with our uh, rotation just because we do want to maintain bull niche for the additional sustain there. Uh, but everything will make sense once we do it on our six million dummy. You guys will be able to see kind of the two phases, so to speak, of the, of the rotation. Let's put the bear back on. Uh, now, wardens do have uh, major fracture with sub assault. It only lasts for five seconds, so we're not going to have 100% uptime on it. Um, so this parse, however, is going to be comparable uh, with stamina DKs, uh, just because both stamina DKs and wardens have major fracture. Uh, they're not. This parse is not necessarily going to be uh, representative, uh, like comparable to a nightblade parse, just because nightblades have minor berserk. 
And obviously, it's not going to be comparable to uh, Templars or Sorks because neither of them have major fracture. So just something to keep in mind when you're trying to compare metrics uh, against each other. So let's get the bear out, and then we will do our six main dummy parts. Just so you guys get an idea, kind of metric to compare uh, different builds. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. General rule is uh, for the rotation is whenever you sub assault, you just want to have you back afterwards. You're weaving everything else though. You can see here we're actually getting our barrel to run up a little bit faster than every other rotation. So again, on the rotation where you have to re-up the Betty, you don't have to do a heavy attack after the second uh Sub assault. Oops. If you do, you can see here that really helps out your sustain overall. But you do get a little bit more DPS if you uh, don't do the uh, heavy attack after the second one. Messing up my rotation now. So, for example, if you did something like this and just light weave that whole thing, it's certainly doable. Uh, it's a little bit harder to sustain. Alright, so that is our Stamina Warden parse. So, see here, 44.3k, uh, and this is with Major Fracture. Um, so, if you guys remember our Sork video, our Stam Sork video, and our Stam Plar video, um, this is not too far off from what where I think Stam Sorks and Stamina Templars will pull if they had Major Fracture. Um, it is a little bit on the low end, though, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the good thing with this rotation is, uh, if you're a little bit faster than I am, you can actually maintain uh, Berserking Warrior pretty much almost 100% of the time. You can see here we have 96% uh, of time on the five-piece set, uh, five full stack of Berserking Warrior, uh, which is basically, for all intents and purposes, it is um, the entire parse. So you can get basically the highest uptime with Berserk Warrior because we're only running three skills on a back bar uh, with the bear. Now, if we're not running the bear, if we have Ballista instead, uh, you're still able to maintain really good uptime on Berserk Warrior, but when you're using, when you have to use Ballista, that's four global cooldowns, so your window of opportunity is, becomes a lot smaller all of a sudden. Uh, so with the bear, you're able to maintain pretty much 100% uptime on Berserk Warrior, Without the bear, it's going to be uh, less so. It'll probably be closer to around 92%, but it's still possible to do it if you're very quick uh, on your feet with the rotation there. Uh, so in terms of DPS, you can see here, sub assault is pretty dang strong. Uh, we got 26 uh, sub assaults out, uh, and the average hit there was almost 20k. So really, really something, uh, something strong here. And so the bear is also very strong. So Bite is just a normal attack that the bear does. Um, so that did 4.7% uh, of our DPS. Um, so it did more than running Flash's Bleed. Um, and then Crushing Swipe um, is the heavy attack that it does from time to time. And then Guardian Savagery is actually when you use the ultimate itself. Um, so uh, Guardian Savagery is not quite as strong as Eternal Guardian, um, but it can still hit for quite a lot. Um, I've seen it hit much higher than this. We got unlucky here with a low number of crits here. 
Uh, but the the bear itself combined, if you do if you add up all, all this, it ends up being around a shy of 10% of our DPS. So losing that bear and using ballista instead uh, is a big DPS loss because ballista can usually only max out at around here-ish, around 20, uh, 2400. So you're losing 2000 plus 12,000 plus 1000 and you're gaining back maybe 2500. Uh, so not, not using the bear is around a 2k loss or so. As you can see here, Endless Hail, Razor Caltrops, Poison Injection uh, can tick pretty hard towards the end. Uh, those are all really important to maintain. Uh, then our weapon da or poison damage on the back bar propping quite a lot, so you do want to maintain um, Endless Hail for that reason. All right, so that is it for this. Uh, well, let's one more thing. Let's check the uh, major fracture up. That's our major fracture up time here with 84%. So the five seconds uh, on sub assault, the major fracture did end up reducing the overall time, um, but it is still pretty nice to have. It's a nice AOE source of major fracture uh, for trash pulls, uh, and it also does deal a lot of AOE damage. So remember that 20k average is going to be uh, across anything that gets hit by those shulks as they pop up. So that's it for this build video. If you guys have any questions about Stamina Wardens or Wardens in general, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, now when it comes to Stamina Wardens, I'll be honest, I really don't know anybody who plays Stamina Warden like as their main DPS character. Uh, the closest person that I can think of uh, off the top of my head would be Fear Turbo. Um, but I don't think, I'm not sure if he plays anymore. I've heard rumors, whispers that uh, he doesn't uh, play anymore, but I'm not 100% sure um, whether he, he does or not. So uh, Fear Turbo would probably be the first person I would ask for uh, any sort of Stamina Warden advice, uh, just because I know he has played Stamina Warden and I know he is good with it. Uh, so yeah, if I don't know the answer to any sort of questions you might have, I'll probably reach out to try to reach out to Fear first, uh, and then try to see if anybody else has any ideas. Uh, Stamina Warden is just one of those DPS specs that are, are just not played all that much uh, compared to other DPS specs. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys found it informative and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.